The dead zone is defined as a flat fastball. So that's something that not a lot of people understand. And today we're gonna to talk about what exactly is the dead zone uh, and how do you kind of identify if you are in that range. So to give a little background on where dead zone came from, is basically when pitch numbers were, were starting to be uh, brought to the table and especially in the public sector, we were learning more and more information about data, especially ball flight. With thorough analysis, uh, you're able to find that there's a certain area of where a four seam can be thrown in terms of induced vertical movement that resulted in really poor performance. So with that in mind, this range was 13 to 16 inches of induced vertical break. And if you were a pitcher that fell in that kind of realm there between 13 and 16 of induced vertical movement on your fastball, we were finding that a lot of damage was being done against you on the offensive end. So with that in mind, taking that into training considerations, we're trying to figure out how do we get pitchers out of the dead zone? Because having a fastball that doesn't really profile uh, is not advantageous for that individual pitch or the rest of your arsenal. So trying to figure out a way to modify that is super important. So how do you know if you are in the dead zone? If you're a professional pitcher, odds are you have this data on hand and you can kind of see if you're falling into that 13 to 16 inches of induced vertical movement area. Um, if you are not a professional pitcher, one way that I think you can really figure out if you're falling in there is, is evaluating your fastball performance. So if your fastball is failing to really get a true identity as a pitch, is it a swing and miss up in the zone? Is it a ground ball pitch that you throw better down in the zone? Trying to figure out where it profiles is gonna be really important. Um, if you're a guy who is never getting a swing and miss and it's getting hit pretty hard, then we should probably consider what you can do to get out of the dead zone. So another thing that I wanted to touch on here is if you're a guy who thinks you might be kind of underperforming for where your velocity is at, you might be falling in this dead zone. Dead zone is something that, you know, we're now able to quantify, but it's been known for a really long time. If you look back at kind of old school coaches, it would be a fastball that they label as being flat. Right, and it's one of those fastballs where, let's say you're in college and you're throwing 95, but your fastball gets turned around like it's 88, or if you're in high school throwing 90 and guys are teeing off on your fastball, making it look like it's low to mid 80s, odds are you're underperforming because the movement is in that dead zone. So a lot of times a way to figure out if you are falling in that is guys come back to the dugout, they're saying, yeah, that fastball is flat. Oh, it's 93, but it looks like it's 88. That's one way to really find out without data validation that you are falling in that dead zone. So what are your options if you're falling in the dead zone? Uh, the first thing, and we had a video about pitch usage that you can reference with this, would be altering what pitches you're throwing the most. Not everybody has to rely on the fastball as the prominent pitch. So switching around your usages to better optimize your arsenal if you have better secondary offerings and maybe you really need to use that fastball less, that's a advantageous solution there. Uh, another way is manipulating the fastball in and of itself. So we can change characteristics of that pitch by either making it cut more, having better vertical movement in terms of induced vertical movement, uh, more arm side run or more sink. So with that in mind, the ways that you're going to be able to accomplish that would be a shift in terms of the axis of the pitch, changing the efficiency of the pitch, or changing the seam orientation with that. One thing I did want to touch on is chasing high levels of induced vertical movement can oftentimes lead to pushing the ball, which will more times than not lead to a pretty significant velo decrease. So if you find yourself trying to get out of the dead zone and you're chasing after a ton of induced vertical movement, you might see that you've developed a push of the ball. And while that vertical movement is up, you may be sacrificing a lot of velocity. So those are some of your options to get out of the dead zone. 
Again, the dead zone has been quantified as being that 13 to 16 induced vertical movement range. However, if you have other outlier qualities about you, whether that's command, vertical approach angle, your usage percentages, whatever that might be, there are certainly ways to get around it. The dead zone in and of itself is in a death sentence for a pitcher, uh, but that is something to keep in mind and we wanted to give a little better explanation of what the dead zone is. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.